Video game delays are always annoying for fans, but when it happens only once, it's usually not a big deal. When it happens over and over again, you start to wonder what the hell is happening. Troubled development rarely leads to a good finished product, and trouble seemed to be all that this Inazuma 11 Victory Road game knew. Most people might not know this, but this game was announced back in 2017 under a different name, and its release date was pushed back for over six years. But with the recent release of the demo on Switch and with how good the game feels right now, it has definitely challenged how I see video games and video game development, and shows that a team can work through their problems if given enough time, no matter how frustrated it might make the fans. In the end, once the game comes out, it will all be worth it, if the game can speak for itself. And so today, I want to tell you the story of how Inazuma 11 went from almost cancelled to reaching the success it is enjoying today. Our story begins with a little company called Level 5. Level 5, you might have heard of them. They're a developer, they're a publisher, and they've actually worked on many different games. Games such as Professor Layton, Yokai Watch, and perhaps more famously, Nino Kuni. Now, there's a big difference between Level 5 and other anime game studios, which is they do not acquire these licenses. They made these. They made all of these. Unlike Bandai or unlike CC2, they don't have to go out and acquire the Naruto license and make a new game every year and be checking constantly with the IP makers. Is this thing okay? Did I make this character good or whatever? No, they just made all of this stuff. And that also goes for Inazuma 11, uh, which they have made a few games for already. Now, they made the first Inazuma 11 game back in 2008. At the same time that they released the game, or like a few months later, the anime came out. And there are fans of the anime that think like the video games are the adaptations, but it's actually the opposite. Anime is an adaptation of the video game, and it's all made by level 5. Now, you may notice that it's been a while since we've gotten an Inazuma 11 game, or at least a main series game, since 2013. And all of these games, by the way, are portable games. The main series and uh, Inazuma 11 Go, these are all Nintendo DS games and Nintendo 3DS games. The exception here would be the spin-off Inazuma 11 Strikers, because that came out on the Wii. But we never got a proper home console game. Been a while. And so this was a very exciting announcement back in October of 2017. Inazuma 11 Ares announced for PlayStation 4 Switch, also iOS and Android. But it launches this summer, guys. Summer 2018 in Japan. It's coming out, and you know, this wasn't really a big announcement for them. This was in the middle of uh, like a level five uh, event where they had multiple things and they were like, you know what? We'll just announce this early for our fans and uh, show you a little bit of a tech demo that we've been working on. This is super early development stuff. PlayStation 4 is a console that everyone has. The Nintendo Switch is a console that everyone has. And I guess we can sort of ignore the iOS and Android side of things because uh, the game actually looks good. It looks good. They go quiet for the rest of 2017. And in 2018, they come out with an actual announcement. The first trailer comes out. And oh boy, does this game look good. Just going to do an old-fashioned trailer reaction here. You know, just look at it. We're in 2024 right now. If this trailer came out today, it wouldn't be bad. So back in 2018, this was so hype. We got some free roaming, we got some story stuff. There's obviously some concerns that when you port a game from the portable consoles to a bigger console, you gotta make like better graphics, better systems, all that stuff. Maybe some of these RPG elements will fall along the way, but that wasn't the case at all. And of course, you have the football. And already, Think about this. The demo they showed was back in September 2017. This is about six months later. And already they've got so many more systems uh, showcased here. Obviously, it's a vertical slice. It's a very heavily edited trailer, so you're not seeing actual gameplay. But you're already seeing a bunch of systems that you didn't see in the demo before. Animations look fantastic. There's a shooting mechanic that is completely different from what we have nowadays. Special attacks too, beautiful animations. Inazuma 11 Ares. Coming out in 2018 for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, iOS and Android. 2018. So, game's coming out in the summer. March 2018, they released the first trailer. And only three months later, folks. Uh-oh. <laughs> Inazuma 11. Aries delayed to fall in Japan. Okay, so that's not a big delay, I don't think. 
because it's, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it was summer, now it's fall. That's the next season, okay? It's not a big deal. It's not a big delay, okay? It's not, it's okay. It's okay. Also, it came with a secret announcement, which make things a little bit better. What's the secret announcement, you ask? Let's click it. So, Level 5 celebrated 20 years of excellence. And they made this big blog post going all over all the games that they're working on and uh, the, the journey so far for the past 20 years, right? So this is why this announcement is secret. They talk about Yokai Watch, Snack World, which is another property that they own, Inazum 11 and Professor Layton, the latest games that they're putting out. Of course, they talk about Inazum 11 Ares, both the anime and the game. Now, in the middle of this wall of text, they included an announcement that they didn't put anywhere else. The anime has, start, has begun its broadcast in Asia, and it's scheduled to come to Europe in fall 2018 and North America in 2019. Now, the slate also includes the premiere of the video game in 2019 with the aim to tap into the growing esports movement. This is the first time that they've announced a North American and a European version of this game. Hidden away in this huge ass press release, man. They couldn't just take the win with a big announcement. They just hid away this announcement. This is the only place where they announced this game is coming out to the West. The only place, which is insane. These guys do not know how to take a W. Instead, the headline was Inazuma 11 delayed. It could easily have been Inazuma 11 uh, Ares announced for Europe and North America, but instead they hid it away in that press release. And so the headline was that it was delayed, but it's fine. It's a small delay, you know, from summer to fall, it's only a couple of months. It, this announcement happened in June, which was not great, like it was super close to the summer. They were getting there and suddenly they were like, uh-oh, we're not gonna make it, so push it back. And uh, so yeah, it's coming out in the fall, it's fine, it's fine, uh-oh, okay. So, uh, uh, in Zoom 11 delayed to the winter. Um, fall came, it's October, October 2018 now. And it's no longer coming out this fall. The worst part about this is that they offered no explanation at all. And so the game that was coming out in the summer got delayed to the fall, got delayed to the winter, and we still don't know why. We don't know what the hell is going on. They're being very quiet about this. They are just pushing back the dates and not offering any explanations. And before we move on with the story, I have to introduce you to someone. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Akihiro Hino. He is the founder, president and CEO of Level 5. He's been there since the beginning, he started the company and he's still the president nowadays. When you talk about Level 5, you talk about this man too. They are synonymous. Now, at this point in the story, Inazuma 11 Ares is coming out in winter 2018 and Akihiro Hino is about to become everyone's favorite Santa. As the children gathered around the Christmas tree, Looking at all their little presents, the little boxes, wondering, is there an Inazuma 11 copy of the game in there? I wonder, when I open the presents, will there be... Nope! Inazuma 11 Ares, delayed past May 2019 in Japan. Constant delays finally explained. So far, all the delays have been through the usual channels, you know, press releases, the PR department, but this time, the CEO himself had to come out and explain why they keep delaying this game. And I kid you not, I kid you not, he did this on December 25th, Christmas Day 2018. This man went live, he hit the start streaming button and went live for 15 minutes to tell everyone that the game was not coming out before May. Didn't even give you a date, by the way. He just said, before May, and there is no way. And basically on Christmas Day, just spent 15 minutes explaining why that happened. Unfortunately, the stream is no longer available. It's been made private, which is unfortunate. But thanks to news websites like Gematsu.com, we actually have summaries of the reasons why he uh, delayed the game and why the company had to delay the game. And the big reason, ladies and gentlemen, was the 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia. <laughs> Now, I do have a big American audience, so I feel like I need to explain what the FIFA World Cup in Russia is. Uh, you guys know the Super Bowl, right? Now, imagine the Super Bowl, but people actually care about the sport and are not just waiting for the break to watch the ads. People actually like watching the games. Also, instead of a single day, it lasts for a full month. It happens every four years. And also, America is usually there, but they're not the protagonists. I know it's hard to imagine, but... They're usually not the protagonists. That said, if you're watching this video, you're probably a football fan and you know what the World Cup is. Uh, you're cool in my book. Initially, Level 5 was trying to develop Inazuma 11 Ares alongside the World Cup 2018. However, preparations took some time and development started later than planned. Basically, 
These guys saw the FIFA World Cup and thought, hold on a second, we have a football game. We should put out the football game. And did not plan early enough to do this. They tried to rush out a football game only to capitalize on football hype happening because of the World Cup in Russia. This happens all the time in video games, but because they were not pressured by, you know, an outside license, they were able to just delay it, delay it, and not put out a rushed game uh, to market, which is what would happen if they put out this game alongside the World Cup. The goal was to release the game in uh, July 2018, but there was an un unintended miscalculation. <laughs> hmm. What was this miscalculation? Okay, so this slide is a bit heavy on text, and I do apologize for that. So here's a little bit of Subway Surfers to keep you engaged. So the game has been in development internally, but due to the lack of time, they decided to enlist the help of a third party, okay? So they could not develop the game by themselves, and they decided to hire another studio. However, though the external development team that Level 5 enlisted did not have enough people to develop something on the scale of Inazuma 11, they accepted the task anyway. Basically, putting the blame on this outside studio that they hired. He does not name the studio, and that's good, but I think we could find with some digging. I'm not going to do that because this is an extremely shitty thing to do. Basically, throwing another studio under the bus and blaming them for the constant delays they're doing. Saying, okay, these guys were not big enough, and they accepted the job anyway. It's their fault that the game is delayed. I think you, as the main developer, should take some responsibility in the studios that you pick. Level 5 then tried to rebuild the game by adding a large number of its own staff to the project, but since the company realized that a good product could not be made with this development system, they teamed up with a new company and are working on it as this new project. So basically, they blamed the other studio for taking on this job and not having the team size to do it, said fuck it, we'll do it ourselves, and then realized they don't have the team to do it either. So they had to hire another company, and they're still not taking responsibility for it. This was an insane stream. Absolutely crazy, and I can't believe the amount of, like, uh, blame dodging that this guy was doing at the time. And there was another problem coming up, which is because of the constant delays, the anime Inazuma 11 Ares had finished airing. It aired from April 6, 2018 to September 28, 2018. The game is now coming out after May 2019, so Ares is, is no longer a thing. Are you still going to call your game Inazuma 11 Ares? Are you still going to focus your game on the series that has been over for a while? Or are you going to include some Orion stuff, which is the new series that's about to, to start, uh, or has started already on October 2018, and is going to run until September 2019? And he says that, yeah, okay, maybe we'll do some Orion no Kokyuin uh, anime content. Uh, it might also just be DLC. So now there's like stacking up new problems on top of it because now they don't just have the initial game they had planned to develop, they are also having to make additional content on top of it. So the problems stack up and 2018 ended up not being a great year for Inazuma 11 fans because if you think about it, in March you had the first trailer and that was great, but from there onwards it was basically delay, delay, delay in June, October and December. Surely. 2019 will be a better year, right? Inazuma 11 SD gets announced for smartphones in March 2019, pissing off Inazuma 11 Ares fans even further. And it doesn't matter if they were like just console fans or mobile fans, because remember, Inazuma 11 Ares was coming out for phones too. So they basically just announced another mobile game that was lower quality than the one they were developing with this chibi art style and like clearly just a cash grab. Because they knew this wasn't going to go down smoothly, they started a development blog. So I love development blogs. I'm a big fan of like Shinobi Strikers development blogs where they explain like why they are balancing certain jutsu, why they think it was strong versus why it wasn't. Is it like statistical use? Do they look at like win rates and what do they do? I love the Riot uh, development blogs with 2XKO, the former Project L, where they talk about how they choose characters, how they uh, uh, translate the moves from the MOBA into the fighting game. That stuff is all really great. It gives you a behind-the-look scene at uh, how the developers are thinking about stuff. I love the Guilty Gear Strike developer blogs, where they go, fuck you, the lobbies are great. <laughs> and this is how the GOAT started the blog. Hello, everyone. Akihiro Hino here. The other day, we had a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> now, I could have guessed that the other day you had a meeting basically every day without a development blog. It basically says that this meeting was held to discuss game systems. Discuss game systems of a game that's been in development for over two years. 
I could have guessed that without the development blog. This may sound like I'm nitpicking on this point, that it's not that big of a deal. You're right. It wouldn't be that big of a deal if this wasn't the one of two pictures in this blog. This is half the blog right here. They launched a developer blog and half of it is how they held a staff meeting to discuss game systems. He then introduces one of those game systems, which has since been scrapped so it's not even worth talking about it anymore. And that was also the last developer blog they did. This is the first and last developer blog. He's, they stopped after this. Or at least I think they did. We, I didn't find any other records of any other developer blogs. This was the one and only. And half of it is about how they had a staff meeting. We're still in March, by the way. And they did nothing for most of 2019 until we got to September. So from March to September, nothing happened. In September, they announced the release date for two games. The mobile game gets its release date announced and Inazuma 11 Ares gets its release date announced. Remember that Ares still does not have a release date. They just said that it's not coming out before May 2019. Well, May comes around, the game's not out, and it's not until September that you hear news. First you hear that, hey, the mobile game is coming out in October, so next month, guys, we're in September 2019, and this mobile game is coming out next month. As for Ares, we're gonna change its name, which makes a lot of sense, to Great Road of Heroes. And we're gonna launch it Spring 2020, which is, you know, a little bit later than maybe we were expecting, because you, you kind of said not before May 2019, and technically Spring 2020 is after May 2019, but a little bit far away as far as we expected. So Spring 2020, this game is coming out. The mobile game is coming out next month. They seem pretty confident about it. I mean, it's September and they're saying it's coming out next month. And uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> deja vu much, huh? Okay. <laughs> Oof. Uh, Inazuma 11 SD delayed to early December in Japan. Inazuma 11 fans, even the ones that were looking forward to SD, found it a bit weird that they went through most of October without any news of the game. Because they posted this update on October 31st. The very last day of October, the month they had promised to release this game, they went, uh, actually, you know, early December sounds a lot better. Uh, this was on Halloween, by the way. We already had a Christmas update, and now we have a Halloween update. They clearly did not learn to avoid holidays. And then we get to December. Early December comes around. The game's not out. What is going on? Inazuma 11 SD delayed again to January 3rd, 2020. On December 23rd, at least we avoided the holiday this time, okay? They're learning. They're learning by two days, but we did avoid it. I'm just gonna knock out Inazuma 11 SD out of the picture real quick. The game was not delayed anymore. It did come out on uh, January 3rd, 2020. And then it got shut down on December 1st, 2020. So it didn't even last a year. The red box of text right there says Inazuma 11 SD service has ended. And they provided basically a nothing reason. Which is like the PR speech of, oh, we figured out we wouldn't be able to provide the fans with the quality that they truly deserve. Like, basically saying nothing about the reason why they shut down this game. But it didn't even last a year gave us an absolute nothing reason, but this was in December of 2020, and we're still in March on our Inazuma 11 console game story. And apparently this game is uh, going through some troubles. So, little sense of deja vu here, you know, we changed the name, we set a new release date, we thought it was a clean slate, we thought we were gonna get some good momentum uh, and, and finally release this game, and, uh, you know, Akihiro Hino, uh, he takes it to Twitter and says, you know what, like, there have been some challenges, this game is facing some difficulties, uh, I'll tell you more about it in April, uh, here's a picture, so uh, the, the news goes goes down a little bit easier, and then guess what, I, April comes around, and the game is delayed again, this time to 2021, and at this, at this point, even the most devout fans would give up. Because there was a little hope when this announcement came through, as they chose April 1st for this devastating announcement. On April Fool's Day, they decided to just break everyone's hope and trust and say, you know what, we're delaying this game. And everyone's like, no way, man, that's an April Fool's joke. This game has already been delayed like five times. This this one, this one's, it's, it's a funny joke, but it's, it wasn't. It was not a joke. They tweeted, they, they literally posted this on April 1st, but they did provide reasons this time. They did talk about why they delay the game. And the blame, folks, is on you, the gamers. It was your fault the game was delayed. Due to the game's development issues, production was difficult and the schedule was significantly delayed. 
the critical user feedback online led to a decline in staff motivation, putting the game in a difficult situation. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you criticize the game online for it being delayed a mere like five or six times? How dare you gamers? Now, I'm not making fun of the staff uh, lack in motivation, because that's a real thing. A lot of people go to Twitter and think they can just say whatever they want, forgetting that there's real people on the other side trying to do a good job. And usually developers and gamers are on the same side. Everyone just wants, just wants a good game at the end of the day. So I'm not making fun of the staff lack of motivation. What I find funny here is that Hino, once again, just takes zero responsibilities for the delay. Never once did he go, oh, actually, it's our bad. He does list a few other reasons. The biggest one being uh, they changed the engine. Obviously, that's going to delay the process. But he's constantly just looking for outside reasons. You know, first it was the third party studio, man. They told us they had the staff and they didn't have the staff. And now it's gamers, man. Gamers online, man, they're ruining everything because the staff is not motivated because of their criticism online. <sighs> that man is just not taking responsibility for any of this. But gamers also get a W because while some people were criticizing them, man, while some people were just trashing the developers and hurting their motivation, this game was almost cancelled. Level 5 once considered stopping the game's development. And who stopped? Who put a stop to that? It was fans. There were fans who sincerely supported them, and so they decided to try and resume development somehow. So big up for gamers who supported them. Big up for the gamers that stayed true. And through six or seven delays, you guys kept supporting them, and you stopped this game from getting cancelled. Here's your reward. We have now decided to prioritize another game over the development of Inazuma 11. <laughs> Bro, they literally, I'm not kidding, April 2020 said, you know, thanks to some fans, we decided to to keep going. September same year, they went, due to business reasons, we decided to prioritize Yokai Academy. Here's the game they decided to prioritize. Well, at least the game is out. Uh, that's that's the upside. So in 2020, we had the mobile game released in January. The console game got delayed to 2021 in April. In September, they announced they are prioritizing another game and they shut down the mobile game in December. So another great year for Inazuma 11 fans. I don't know if we can even look forward to 2021 anymore, man. It's hard to look forward to 2021 after a couple of years like this. And in 2021, we only had one story. They went completely silent during the whole year of 2021, except for one moment. And it was a pretty big story, too. And no, it wasn't that the anime game was released and everyone lived happily ever after. No. Um, it was April 2nd, okay? We avoided April Fool's this time. We learned. We learned. But it was a big story. The story was that Inazuma has been delayed again. This is the biggest delay yet. Game was coming out in 2021. It's now been delayed to 2023. Two year delay. If you think back to when this game was supposed to come out with the Russia World Cup in 2018, it's insane that we're still doing this. 2023 in Japan, that's when it's coming out. But this time, it was more than just a delay announcement. The GOAT wanted to show us the game running. All right, so there he is, the GOAT. Akihiro Ino. There he is. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, there he goes. Man's really apologizing for the, for the delays. But he shows off the game a little bit and what they've been doing, showing that the, yeah, the game is still real, okay? Believe us, we've been delaying it a lot, but it, it's it's still good. Look at look at me running around in the baseball field. Hey, <laughs> isn't this fun, guys? Uh it shows a few things that uh, haven't been shown before, you know, some some of the spaces. Not not only spaces, but also like some systems, some new uh, special shot animations, some new special skill animations. So yeah, showing that they're actually working on the game more than uh, just words this time. And a big delay to 2023. And it would be a while before we heard anything about Inazuma 11 again. They went completely silent for the rest of 2021 and well into 2022. For the first time since the game's announcement, they spent over a year not mentioning the game at all, not giving you anything. And then they came back. They came back with a title change and some new info. 
Inazuma 11 Great Road of Heroes title changed to Victory Road of Heroes, which later they quietly dropped the of Heroes name and just became Victory Road, which you know it nowadays. They didn't make an announcement out of it. They just dropped it. And they brought up some new details about the game as well. And this is the comeback story. It took us a long time to get here. From 2017 to 2022, they went absolutely nuts with promotion, with showcasing the game, and finally, it looks like a real game is about to happen. December 2022, they showed the Switch gameplay systems. Yo, you can play the Switch with buttons, but you can also use the tap on the screen, and you can uh, play horizontal, or you can play with the screen vertical if you want. L look at all the stuff we made, right? Absolutely insane. I've never seen a game do all of this on Switch. By the way, I don't, I don't think you can do this in the demo. I don't know what happened to it. But yeah, basically, like the DS games. True, true, true. They show a bunch of new stuff. The game looks uh, looks gorgeous. Like, it's it's been updated a bunch of times. We haven't seen so much gameplay like this uh, in a very, very long time, too. March 2023 comes around, so four months later. And they introduce a 5v5 game mode. So we're not just going to play 11 on 11. There's a new match system that is 5v5 if you want to play it. Also, uh, talk a bunch about the story. Talk about this Chronicles route, which I don't even know what this is, but like there's a map overview and you can choose to do stuff. There's uh, talents that you can unlock to in the player's universe. There's so much to this game in single player content, man. And then August 2023, they show off more game systems. And a lot of these game systems, you might recognize them from the beta. These are the game systems that made it to the end. There, you might notice some differences here and there, especially with the HUD. But a lot of it, like this one right here, the pass and keep uh, minigame, looks completely different. We're not done. September 2023, they announced a PS5 version with yet another trailer. Upgraded the visuals, the game looks better now, and it's coming out to PS5. Big, big announcement that's beautiful. I mean, the game's been in development for a while, so I guess uh, it makes sense to adapt it to the new generation of consoles. At the same time, TGS was about to happen in September 2023, and so they released uh, the playable tutorial that they put out on TGS. The game was playable at TGS, and they straight up put the tutorial out on YouTube so everyone could see how the game is played. Like, straight up teaching people how to play the game, which reveals a lot of confidence that your game is, like, close to ready and it's good and, and, and like, so much stuff happened towards the end of 22 and uh, throughout 2023. Finally, it looked like a real game. Until they decided to delay it again. We were riding a high. It was looking like, finally, this game was real, man. Until they decided, in November 2023, Victory Road delayed to 2024, boy. And in a Zoom 11 fans that remember the story started going, oh no. Oh, not again, man. But wait! Switch beta test announced! So, they delayed the game to 2024, sure. But they also announced that a Switch beta test was going to come out worldwide in March 2024. Which it did. And that's the game that we can play today. As if that wasn't enough, they also added Steam to the supported platforms for the retail version. So the game's coming out in 2024 and they are still adding platforms. They just added PC to the list of platforms where you can are gonna be able to play the game. Which brings us to the current year, 2024. The beta starts in March, it's great. It's an online beta. And even though, you know, there's some netcode and whatnot, it's very, there are a lot of like turn-based, well, not even turn-based, the game just stops a lot uh, during the match. So, having a little bit of delay is not a big deal. I actually developed that in a very smart way. But it's mostly online, the systems are fun, and there are a lot of systems, a lot of strategy behind it, so people are loving it. Also, do you remember when they did that big press release that announced that the game was coming out to Europe and North America? Remember how they announced basically the game for the rest of the world, hidden away in a little press release? They also announced that a worldwide beta test trial version was going to be not only on Switch, but it was going to be on PS4, PS5, and Steam for the purpose of cross-play experiment. I just did this research for this whole presentation, for this story, and throughout the whole time, I was looking for when they announced cross-play. They didn't. This is the first time they did. Hidden away in a tweet that says, Ah, oh, we're going to do the beta on the other platforms too to test out cross-play. Now, to be fair, they are still not announcing crossplay. They're saying they're saying they're gonna test it. Maybe the crossplay is awful and ruins the game, and they end up launching without it. And that brings us to the success story, because turns out it doesn't matter how long a game has been in development and how much trouble it's been through. 
All that matters is the final product. All that matters is that the game speaks for itself, and if it's good, word of the mouth will spread. And so, within less of a week, they reached half a million downloads for the beta on Switch alone. Because that's the only place where it's out. And they announced that on April 1st, 2024. <laughs> Once again, not an April Fool's joke, but they did it again. But that is how Inazuma 11 went from an almost cancelled game to a huge success, at least beta-wise. Nowadays, the beta is still out on Switch, so you can play right now. The beta will add story mode at some point, and the downloads end in June 28, 2024. They said that the beta was still going to be live for a while after June 28, but that's the last day that you can download. So it's a very long beta. From March 28, I think, to June 28. Story mode will be added to the beta at some point. Also, PS4, PS5, and PC are going to be added at some point to test crossplay. And right now, we still don't have a release date other than 2024. But if you're ever curious if the game ever got delayed again, all you got to do is look at the news from the previous national holiday. That's how Inazuma 11 went from almost cancelled to the huge success of the beta. I thought it was a story worth telling, so I hope you guys enjoyed it, because I did too. If you want to watch the Inazuma 11 beta, like raw gameplay, you can check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.